A big thing in those days was black marker pens. I heard him talking to someone else, and I heard him say, "Marker pen." I got on the next train to go into Bangalore, and I went all over looking for a black marker pen. I finally found one, but I could find only a silver one. So I came back. At that time, I was living in the house where he was, and I stood in the room in front of him, with this thing in back of me. Very innocent, he said. What do you have in back of you? And I said, a pen. He said, let's see. I opened my hand, and he said, silver. I've got a gold one. So I didn't care. I learned over there, praise and blame, all the same. You didn't pay any attention to anything Papa said. You just made a shield on yourself, and you didn't react. So I took the pen and put it down in the next room, where I was sleeping. In about five minutes, he came in. He didn't look at me. He walked right past where we were all sitting, and he went into my room. He picked the pen up. He didn't look at me, and he walked out, hiding this thing in his hand. You know, he was flamboyant. That's the only word I can say for him. Wherever he went, he took us on wonderful trips. In India, everyone is so interested in your life that they would come up and say, "What is your name?" But I wanted to know. About their lives, so I would say, "What is your name?" I'd put it back on them, and then they'd say, "Where are you from?" I'd say, "Where are you from?" In this way, I got to hear miracle after miracle that nobody has read in books. You can't imagine the miracles. Everybody had something wonderful to tell about what was happening to them. I remember that he took me and about three others to this town, and I met a young man who told me his story. The man said he had broken his leg on a motorcycle, and it had not mended correctly. His sisters were yakking at him to go to Baba's and get it fixed. The doctors were yakking at him to go and have a tree broken and set with a cast. One day, when he was shining his shoes with that old-fashioned polish that we don't have here now, cake polish, he got so mad with the pain that he said, "I don't know what to do." He threw the polish, and it hit the ceiling, and from it came down streams and streams of holy ash. It went on until it flooded the floor. The neighbors came in and came in to take the holy ash. Finally, he got on his motorcycle and went up to Baba. Baba said, "Well, did you finish shining your shoes?" His leg had been healed. Once I went with Baba to a very wealthy home, and he said, "There is going to be a wedding." He gave me a sari to wear. I was going to wear it here tonight. And then I decided to wear a brighter one instead. So I went to the wedding, and I saw this lady of about sixty-five or seventy come out. And then her husband, who must have been twenty years older than she, he had to carry him out in a wheelchair. The bride and the groom. Baba's going to marry these two. He's going to marry that old lady to that old man. I was going on and on. And finally, they explained to me that it was one of those weddings when you marry again on the fiftieth golden anniversary. The word of what I thought got to Baba, and I thought he would just explode laughter. I gave him a lot of good times in my craziness at Whitefield. We had fun, but when we get to Prashantinilam, his ashram, he used to bring us down. And we would get serious. He became like Krishna, the king. But one day, I was sitting on the floor where we had to sit at bhajans, 
and when I got up, my leg was asleep and I fell into the aisle. That's the only time I've ever seen Papa laugh there. I thought he would explode with laughter. But at other times, too, he was just a lot of fun and had a lot of wonderful wisdom. One day he picked up a little piece of paper from the floor. I saw him concentrate, put it in his mouth, and the little piece of scrap paper turned into sesame candy. I'm telling you about my relationship to him. It would not be your relationship. Your relationship might be much better. I'm sure he wouldn't laugh at you. He just had a good time with me. I have things here for you to see that Baba gave me. He was always calling me in and giving me wonderful things. One day he said he was going to give me a picture. So every time I'd go in for an interview, just for fun, I'd say, where's my picture? And he'd say, I will give you a picture. And the next time I'd say, where's my picture? And he'd say, I will give you 100 pictures. The next time I went in, he waved his hand and there were the hundred pictures. I still have them. I haven't given them away. One day, he twirled his head and said, Look, Helda, there's my picture and there's my address too. Almost as if he didn't know what was going to happen. But of course he did. His way of controlling his mind is what I'm trying to teach you here. Do you understand the power of self-control, the power of the mind, the power of concentration? Perhaps we're not going to be able to make pictures. At one time I thought I was, because he said to me, I'll give you three cities. You know what cities are? Miracles. I thought, wow, three cities, that's all I heard, because I had to have an interpreter at that time, whatever he said to me, I'd get so, oof, I'd get wobbly and, and he'd hit me on the head and I'd say, oh, that's worse, Baba. When I'd get out of his presence, I'd start thinking about what he'd said and I couldn't remember a darn thing, although I did remember something about the three cities he was going to give me. I cornered the interpreter. I said, what did he mean? She said, three cities. I said, what were they? And she said, well, I don't remember. As the days went by, I had made statues, I had made holy ash, I had made rings, I had made just about everything you can imagine in my imagination. I said, whoa, I'm going back to America and I can make all these things. I thought I had really hit it this time. Whoa. So one day, I finally cornered Baba. You know, even living in his house, you couldn't get at him all the time. He would see you out of the corner of his eye and swish like that, he would leave. But I cornered him and I said, Baba, what were those three cities that you're going to give me? He said, Prima city, which is love. Shanti city, which is peace, and Anandam city, which is bliss. I looked at him and I said, Those aren't cities, Baba. I've never seen Baba so strict in my life. He pulled up another inch, which made him then five foot three. And he said, If you want lesser things, go to a lesser teacher. I went away and I thought about it and I thought, my God, he's giving me God. God is bliss. And that's how I can give you bliss, kids. I can hit you on the head and you have bliss. Somebody said to me the other day, you hit me on the forehead and something happened, Hilda. Do you understand? Baba was giving me bliss. He was giving me peace. And he was giving me love. I went to him and I said, excuse me, Baba, that was my fault. He said, not your fault, my fault, Swami's fault. How sweet and humble, such a humility, such wonder he is, such a love he shows for everybody.